Hi, Sean McLaughlin here, CEO of Alaska Gear Company, and I just want to introduce this video. It's me interviewing Lonnie, our test pilot for many, many years here at Alaska Gear Company. Lonnie is just, I mean, he's a super cub, bush flying force of nature. We've worked with him now on a lot of projects. He is just, I mean, he has dedicated his life to flying super cubs and flying them in the bush. So I really hope you enjoy this video. So hi, Sean McLaughlin here, CEO of Alaska Gear Company. I'm here with Lonnie, uh, or as we call him here at Alaska Gear Company, our secret weapon. Uh, Lonnie is here collecting his plane out of our hangar here in Palmer, Alaska. He's about to head out uh, for the spring skiing season. Uh, right, Lonnie? Did I got this right? Yeah. You got this right? Okay. Um, pretty close. And, and uh, we th what we're going to do is kind of introduce you to Lonnie a little bit because uh, Lonnie is, as I said, our secret weapon. He's helped us develop the new um, tie shock that's on the market right now. And he's been working with us for how many years now, Lonnie? Mm, been going on five years for and the you, shock. Five years and you've worked on the titanium gear with us. Before that. Yeah. Before that, yep. yep. So he's our test pilot. He's the person who tells us what needs to change, how it needs to change, um, whether it works or not. Um, we even had something break on you once, didn't we? Didn't we? In some of the early <laughs> tests, we don't talk about that. No comment. <laughs> no comment. But, mm -hmm. uh, but Lonnie is the man. So we're here today to talk about the uh, tie shock. And first of all, Lonnie, if you could just tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. Um, well, like why you're so awesome. <laughs> so That's I, not a good place to start. So I'm a career bush pilot. I've got over 18,000 hours in Super Cubs and over 50,000 off airport landings that I logged. And it's basically what I've done for my adult life. And it's my priority is to find new places and crazy places to land. Um, so that's how we got into to all these advances and especially lightweight and better equipment is the need for it. Wait, wait Lonnie, you got to give me those numbers one more time. Give those stats. Give me the stats on yourself again. How many hours? Just over 18,000. How many landings? Just in Super Cubs. Okay. And then landings? Over 50,000 off airport landings, not total landings. That's just in the bush. Yeah. This is why we listen to Lonnie. Mm -hmm. This is why we listen to Lonnie. So, yeah, my priority is to find new places to land and crazy places. So that's part of the reason for developing this equipment, especially the shocks. Yeah. And you, and you work currently with Ultima Thule Lodge? Yeah, I work for Ultima Thule uh, Outfitters. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you, and that season starts up here, and, and you'll run right through June the summer? June 1st, around June 1st, yeah. Okay. And don't you go off, you go off to Africa as well, right, every in, year? In the winter, yeah. In the winter? Uh -huh. and, you fly, and you fly cubs there as well? Super cubs as well. I've been doing that for 16 years. Uh -huh. Okay, so with that background, when you came to us and said, hey, you need to, well, first of all, you came to us and said you need to make titanium gear, and we did that. We listened, um, and we worked with you on that. Uh -huh. When you came to us and said someone needs to design the best shock on the market, a better shock. What, what was the issue? What did you notice? You, you've tried all the shocks, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and what was it? What was happening to you in the field? What, what did you experience that you thought could? Well, there's been some there's been some advancements in the last four or five years with real shocks, right? Yeah. But none of them were were as good as they could be. And of course, I knew that. And you probably started yeah. out with bungees, right? Uh, originally, yeah. And then Bungies, you went? Bungies, AOSs. AOSs. Yep, just okay. like everybody else. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So, and, and how did you know there was something, how, do you know, how did you know that the current products out there could be better? Like, wh what made you think they could be better? Well, for one, I was ultim intimately familiar with, with gas shocks through snowmobiles and off-road bikes. So okay, so that's part of your background. With motocross. Too. Yeah, so I knew how they're supposed to work. So when the first series of sh these style of shocks came out and I started using them, I knew that they weren't as good as they could be because they weren't working like they should be. Got it. Makes and, sense. And yeah, and, and can you give us some examples of that? Like, how did you know? Like, what, what, what were some of the characteristics? Valving issues. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, they're just not working to their potential. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. All right, so we start working with you. We start this whole process. We bring in engineers from those other markets, right? From those other industries. Mm -hmm. And you start working with Doug Keller. Yeah. One of, the, one of the key things we did was find Wayne. And I did that through a contact of mine in California that was big into the off-road industry. Yeah, and Wayne is the engineer that helped us with the, the valving. Wayne is the, the first and foremost shock building valving expert on this planet. He's based out of California. <laughs> so he is to shocks what you are to Super Cubs, basically. He, he is one of the best, without a doubt. Yeah, okay. and he was fundamental to this. Yeah. And we've been working with him now. Yeah, he's been coming up here and 
working on with us for a long time yeah, now. Yeah, uh -huh. super guy. Yeah. Okay, so what happened next? So we get Wayne on board. Mm -hmm. What are the issues, what are the things we're looking at then? And how do we, how do we make this shock, how do we make this shock the best? How do we make it better than everything else out there? Well, again, I was, I was very intimate with the shock systems available. Yeah. So we knew exactly where their weak points were and what we could do better, and that's basically what we did. Okay, so tell me some of those things. How do they, what are some of the things we did? Well, first and foremost, um, so our shock, one of the things unique about our new shock is that it has a much more robust, longer uh, spring to accommodate heavier aircraft gross weight, okay? Um, and because it's longer, we can also play with the preload, initial preload on it to adjust the firmness of the shock without limiting travel. Okay, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Totally does, yep. That's something that was not formally available. So we started with a spring, yep. started with a better spring. Um, the other, the other pr uh, problem we solved was a nitrogen uh, leaking problem. Yeah, tell me about that. So we, we redesigned the shock and properly engineered it with a free floating piston, just like the competition has, mm -hmm. but we eliminated all the leaking issues. Okay? So when it's when it's assembled, it is it is charged with nitrogen at assembly, mm -hmm. but there is no way for that nitrogen to go away. So it is truly a lifetime seal. Right? Right. Okay? Right. And the nitrogen's super crucial. Most people don't understand what the nitrogen does in the shock. The nitrogen does not affect the way the shock works as far as the compression or rebound or the preload on the spring. It's, it, it works a pre-floating piston in the shock because as the shock travels out or extends, it creates a void in the oil, right? And if you do not fill that void with something, then you get air and air causes cavitation in the piston or the valving, right? Mm -hmm. So the piston, if this is the end of the shock, here's the piston, here's the nitrogen. The piston goes like this as the shock travels, right? Okay? So our shock has three times the amount of nitrogen capacity than is standardly used, right? So it, it just, it, it's proper and it works a lot better. And no, yeah. and, and, and the, no leaking, so no straighter valve. Yeah, no, and no leak down or whatever, right. Okay. Yeah. All right, what else did we change in it? Um, the other thing we changed, again, is back to the spring. Um, so our spring actually has an internal sleeve or a guide that mm -hmm. protects the spring from the housing, from mm -hmm. what we call the shock tube. So the spring cannot get into the housing okay, and wear off aluminum mm -hmm. and contaminate the oil, mm -hmm. okay, and more than that, the guide also acts as a, as a travel limiter, which is very crucial because our spring never, ever goes to bind, to coil bind. When it runs out of travel, it is limited by that polymer. Uh, yeah, I remember us testing this out. Yeah, right? and it yeah. also works like a more conventional stop on high-performance shocks, like a shock bumper or a stop. Mm -hmm. When it actually does bottom, it goes into that, that polymer, right? The spring never goes to coil, coil to coil or what they call stack. And the, the reason for that is, is if the spring goes solid, goes coil to coil too many times, the spring breaks, okay? it wears the spring out. They're not actually made to go solid. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That totally does. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I remember us testing a lot of that stuff. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, the spring is, is, is really one of the biggest uh, improvements. It's just a, it's just a lot more uh, advanced, uh, better, better rate spring. Our, our shock did come out slightly heavier than some mm -hmm. of the other shocks like that. And this yep. is, this is the trade-off, right? Yeah. It's a little heavier, which was a huge frustration, especially for, for Doug, our engineer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, to Doug's credit, Doug did everything he possibly could. One thing a lot of people won't get and, yeah. and maybe never get is that there are only two steel components in our shock, and that is the spring and the valve stack shims in the valving. Literally everything else is aluminum and titanium. That's it. And a lot of people ask, why couldn't you use a titanium spring? And the reason for that is, is 
if we were to use a titanium spring, it's not that we couldn't. One, it's not the most ideal spring uh, material to use for our application. Mm -hmm. But if we would have used one, it would have been a significantly larger in diameter. Right. 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 Yeah. So again, it's it's always a trade off or whatever. But yeah, that is the that's the only reason why is the spring. Yeah. But right. believe me, it's it's well worth the trade off. Yeah. Very good. Anything else on construction you want to point out, Lonnie, of the spring? Or of anything, of any part of the shock? <clears throat> no, like I said, you know, we've covered uh, we've covered the nitrogen, the leak down issue, the nitrogen, the spring, the guide, the spring guide sleeve, right? Um, and we so over the last couple of years, we've brought you a whole bunch of different configurations and springs and mm -hmm. valving scenarios. You've done. Do you have any idea how many landings and you've done on this stuff to help us test it? You know, I. I'd have to ballpark total through, we had three prototype. This is number three, right? Yeah. So this one I have just over 1,700 cycles on. Okay. 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 And prior and to that- And you're pointing, we, you're, you're talking about these right here. Our latest, the yep. ones that we STC'd. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you have 1,700 of those and then- Yeah. Prior to that, I mean, it would have been four times that over the right. course of the years. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. A lot of testing. Yeah. So, Lonnie, I got to thank you for all the help work and stuff you've put into these. I just... Um... It's been very, very rewarding. It's like I told Doug, the engineer. Doug and I first uh, conceived that titanium gear, or you thought about it about eight years ago now, and we yeah. were actually going go to uh, go it alone. We actually stuck our nose into it, and that's how long it's been, and the shock's been going Then you started working on now. me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, Doug said, I know somebody that, uh, somebody that <laughs> might be crazy enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. Yeah, for yeah. the return. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, Lonnie, thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful uh, spring flying season here, and yeah. I'm, I'm, we're looking forward to your continued feedback on it. Yeah. Um, and then for all of you, we're in final production preparation here for this shock. We're confirming our whole PMA process to build them. Our first initial run of these shocks is gonna be 50 sets and all the parts are now arriving in Palmer for final, final uh, assembly. And uh, you can see more information, videos, background information about the shocks, et cetera, uh, under tie shocks on our website. So at Alaska Gear Company. Thanks so, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry, more? Yeah. Okay, yeah, go. I'm not quite done yet, I've got one sure. last thing to say, yeah? Yeah. And this is not a joke. So one thing, everybody needs to know is that when when Wayne came out to Alaska and we did the final valving on this shock. And that was la last summer? Last summer, yep. right? You know, I had always hoped to make the shock better than the competition and I knew we could do that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that when Wayne was done, when we were done in the field and he had done the final valving on the shock, even I was blown away by how much better the shock was because it far exceeded my expectations of what was going to be better. Yeah. So that's, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty, pretty wild. That's high praise. And Wayne's coming up here to help us with the uh, confirming our final assembly yeah. here in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So we'll but be seeing him again. To, just wanted to throw that in because like I said, it, it even ex Wayne exceeded my expectations is what we could do. He's yeah. been a great partner. We've had a lot of great partners Amazing. in this project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay, so, Lonnie, anything else? That's it. Now I'm done. Oh, by the way, this is Lonnie's plane behind us. So if you want to take a look, <laughs> this is the beast right here, the one he flies. And mm -hmm. uh, you can see right here, he's, for all the work he does with us, he, of course, he gets titanium gear and he gets a set of the shocks um, as part of the package. Of course, the ones that are coming out for production, this is, the, uh, this is pre our sort of um, finishing touches to them. So the ones that come out will be gold and they'll have writing on the, on the uh, shock can. These well. are the ultra lights, so they're lighter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lonnie, thank you for yeah. everything. Thank you. Safe sir. flying. Yeah.